Hello there and welcome to this Arty Corner on YouTube. It's my Arty Corner and I'm Angela. It's lovely to have you here. If you're new, you are most welcome. If you're a returner, you are most welcome too. And if you've subscribed, whether it's a new subscriber or an old one, you're most welcome as well. So thank you very much for all the comments and suggestions that I've had. Um, I haven't got around to replying to them. I haven't released a video for a week is it or over a week um i've come down with shingles now on top of everything else and it's had me laid a bit low and lacking energy even more lacking energy than i have um it's okay it's not a, you know it's i was quick enough to get to the doctors who i thought i wonder if it's shingles because this hurts and itches and i'm feeling a bit numb in places and she said it sounds like it can i see it yes you can come down then so I went down to the surgery and she took one look and she went yeah shingles right you're early enough that I can give you antiviral treatments so thankfully I'm taking those five humongous tablets a day <laughs> but I've mostly managed five a day um, but it seems to be helping they have spread a little bit from my back a patch on my back round to under one of my boobies and um, along the side and I'm getting pain around there oddly in exactly the same place I was having pain when I damaged my shoulder last year last November my shoulder back and side so that's quite interesting so I don't think they're connected I just think it's coincidence but they're going oh, this year or since last November it's been a heck of a time let me tell you so I've got nothing much done really and when I've tried to make videos, I've been basically incoherent as I start to fall asleep. So, fingers crossed, we'll get through some stuff today, even if I don't get to drawing something. You might recognise this. It's going to be basically a look through my sketchbooks. Books. Have I got the other one near to hand? Most probably not. Not to worry, it's fine. I've got another one here. So this is the disc bound one. I'm still at a quandary as to what to do. I like the idea of a junk journal style thing, but my head is saying, yes, my heart is saying it's not for you, Angela. It's so hard because I love to see what people do, but I can't get my head around how I could make it happen. Nonetheless, it's still ticking, ticking, ticking around my head. So if I'm a bit slow on it, I prefer to be slow and sure and to try things out before I set anything in stone or do anything. I'm notorious, I think, amongst you lot for starting projects and never finishing them. But I hope you take them and finish them, put it that way. Um, my mind can be a bit like a grasshopper. I can flip from project to project, idea to idea, style to style, inspiration to inspiration. That's how I keep things fresh and new for me because I can't do the same thing I do the same kind of art but not the same things within it if that makes sense and it's so hard for me to explain I, I'm inspired by so many things it's going to creep out into my art no matter what anyway I'm burbling here because there's been a lot of thought going on about this I've started um, following Julia Cameron's The Artist's Way so I've been doing morning pages and things are becoming clear and all the negative messages that I still have about myself, my art and life in general. So that's really quite interesting. Some clarity has come with some things. Um, but there's still a lot of work to be done and I'm not able to do everything that she wants to be done in the first week. Some of it I just don't understand. It just does not compute in my head. Some of it I've already done in therapy, but I'm revisiting what I can, what I feel is appropriate. So I think it's one of those books where you do it this way, it works. Yeah, but I've done that, so I'm going to skip that. That's that's me. But I know it's something that I'm likely to carry on with and keep going. Anywho, I think she does say, the one thing you do is the morning pages and affirmations have never worked for me because I'm very good at outthinking them, but affirmations, or at least where you've got resistance and all those negative messages about yourself blurt out onto the page do something with those, rephrase them, look at them. I look for evidence that these aren't true anymore. And hopefully I'll eventually convince them they're gonna give up and just go away. 
sadly they never quite do because when I'm low or down or ill they find I'm weak at that point and yeah anyway let's have a look I have put some extra pages in here which I'm not sure you've seen this one I did I did do in the week it did take me a couple of days to do and I started in the week or oh, earlier in August and I found it I'd started to add color and I decided I'm not too keen on using coloured pencils. I'm not so sure about the colours. So I put it to one side. I look at it now and I think, actually, these positively glow. I'm not so keen about the mint in there, but I can live with it. And I may come back to that and finish it off. But it's one of those things that I just thought, I like this. This pattern here, I like. I like these cute little whimsical touches as well. These are new for me. This was new. Putting little arches on the end of that was quite a... I thought that was quite cool and this here this filling pattern I haven't done before so we may look at that at some point this is another drawing that I'd started I've got two letter J's there it's supposed to be portrait um, but I haven't got any further I put it to one side and I must have forgotten that I'd started it this happens I'm finding bits of artwork everywhere that are part finished as I look through things these you've seen but I'm just going to flip through them again because this is inspiration from Ernst Haeckel, who I love, and I'm absolutely sure I'm going to be digging and delving into his work quite a lot because I've rediscovered it. Um, these you've seen as well on this side. Have you seen these? I don't know, but these I drew with, um, this is Aurora Borealis ink, and this one I think is gray black. They look a lot darker on here than they do on writing paper. That's because this paper soaks up a lot of the ink, sort of sucks it out of the nib, and it becomes really um, much darker than, than they are, which is something for me to think about, you know, going forward as to what kind of paper I use my diamine inks on. These are the water-soluble inks. Um, these, again, I think I've shown you these. I like you, I found the use of two colours interesting there. Simply I picked up the wrong pen and I started drawing with it so I carried on. But that paler colour, that's the Aurora Borealis, this is grey green. Just shoves the blue right back, doesn't it? And it has that feeling of depth uh, in a way that when you look out at the world, things that are a distance seem paler and um, less less saturated colour and less, you know, than they are and things are when they're closer so I do like this one I do like that and these I know you've seen so I've just added colour to them I'm not sure if I've shown you those but I've used them chalk pastels and just um, used a tortillon just to um, get them rubbed into the paper to fix them this paper, whichever the, these papers I'm using here, really do work well with that. And there's no smudging afterwards because I use such a small amount. So I'm quite happy with that. This one I don't think I've shown. It's very messy. It was done at stupid o'clock when I couldn't sleep one night. And um, it is very messy, basically. No two ways about it. I've done this one on a video. There's some notes there and a little step out. How to do it. Yes, I know. And then there's this one, which is upside down because I didn't check which way around the paper goes. Does it matter? Not really. I don't think so. I think they're just as interesting that way as the other way, though my head wants to turn it the other way up. Sadly, I can't split the paper in half, you know, through the sheet, as it were, you know, through that this way, you know, but it's fine. These ones, I did these with you as well. Started to add colour, I haven't finished. I did use um, used, oh yeah, um, Gansai Tambi, Kuritaki Gansai Tambi Art Nouveau, and these are Karin brush markers. I'm still undecided whether I prefer the brighter, because I quite like the brighter colours with graphite behind them, it looks almost metallic where the grey is. This one I did show you, and I have journaled on it. This is what I do with journaling spots. I just use it for writing down thoughts, inspiration, perhaps keeping, you know, if there's an event or something I do that I want to keep track of, I might put something in. 
Um, but, you know, I quite like that idea and I like having wobbly lines. These are some extra that I did with inspiration from another shape. I haven't finished that page. These are pages I intend for writing and I quite like them as they are. I can, I can see me by it getting. I've got some manuscript paper, um, sort of like calligraphy paper, hand lettering calligraphy paper, which looks like parchment. And it'd be rather lovely to take sheets of that and put patterns down the side to use as letters, happy, happy mail letters and things like that. Um, but it'd also be quite nice to put together for people to print out if they wanted to use it, either as letter pages or in journals or whatever. And here's a variation on that theme. Not so happy with this one in some ways. I used a much finer pen. I'm happy with the finer lines, but um, I haven't finished that. I haven't added any shading or anything or any highlight yet. And I know that I think, did I do one on the other side? Not yet, but I took this pattern, which was from an earlier page, you've seen this one, put little dot stoppers on and put a very delicate edge to that paper, which I do like. Again, Oh, I did one on the back of this one, so let's show you the right way up. I started filling these in as well. I, I got distracted. It was the end of August, and I think I just I just thought I got to sleep here. I couldn't keep going, but I do like that. I like the way it fills that band. And a couple of cheeky ones poking out a bit further, and that's fine. But this is quite nice around the edge, I thought. Oh, and that was the other one I was going to show you. Um, I changed each one of these. It's the same basic design, but I made each one slightly different and I filled the background in with flux kinds of shapes, these kinds of seeds. And here, just these lines that go at random, sort of like angles, so they're not parallel. And it sort of fills the space in a different and interesting way. Again, I haven't added any shading or anything to that one. So let's just pop that one back in there. Will that show over the top? Yes. And then this is where I'd finished in this one. And I thought, I like these torn paper edges. I would like to have, see what that looks like. And it actually frames this area here for writing rather nicely. I don't know if you agree on that, but I like it. So this is something else I'm going to work on and perhaps add things to this. So this may be a collection of ideas for things that could be used in journals, who knows? In fact, that feels more right. That feels better than me making a complete journal, but like an ideas book. Yeah, that, that feels, that does feel, that feels better. There we are. A journal, art journal, junk journal, sketchbook, ideas book. Talking of ideas books. This is, um, it's an A5 landscape book. It's, um, it's a secure sex sketchbook. So the pages here are, they call them ivory. They've got quite a, a yellowish color to them to my eye, but ivory is the name, so they're off white. And they're more like a um, smooth card, quite thin card than they are sketchbook paper, but I do like them for working on. And again, they take chalk, this page paper takes chalk pastels really well when you um, buff it in or rub it in with the tortillon. And so, I started picking out from that book some of my favourite bits and pieces to add in here because I could and sometimes redrawing things and trying new things out can be quite comforting for me and this has taken me a number of days to do and um, it's also working with the shapes, thinking about what I can do with them trying different things out you know there's there's variations here um so there's more color and shading to be added on that one but it's more of that i can look at this and i can go okay then flip 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 the same as i can with that one but the ring binding irritates me and then i've just spent a wee while with william morris and company with arts and crafts and i've just filled a page and a bit in with some flowers and that's where i thought we could do something with today. Something easy, simple, fairly quick um, and hope that I can keep my energy going. I did take my, I did go out last week on Wednesday and this did me in. This is what did it in. I was hurting from shingles 
um, I knew it was outdoor. We went to a place called Dufferin Gardens, which isn't far from here. And it's National Trust and I've been a member of the National Trust and I've not been there in donkey's years. And it's got the most beautiful gardens there. And we were walking around going, ooh, ah, oh, no, because we're both as bad as each other. I love the shape on that. It was a very feminine shape. Not in that way, Angela. I know, but it is. <laughs> you know, and things like that. And, you know, she was trying to remember the names of the plants. I didn't have a clue. I said, I just like those. I just like these. Did I have my camera with me? No, I elected to leave it at home. I didn't think I'd use it because I was with company. Did I have my phone with me, which has a camera, obviously? No, I left it in the car. But we and she didn't have her phone because she was out of charge because her charger blew up on her so and she was that visiting you see so and didn't think to charge it in her own car and didn't think to bring the charger from her own car to put into my car so she could have a yeah we, we're both dizzy and scatty like that so I, I made my mind up that I'd go back later in the week as one of the things that Julia Cameron suggests is that you should go on a weekly artist date with yourself, by yourself somewhere that inspires you, that's interesting, that's different. Now, I know I'm going back to somewhere I've been to, but I haven't been there on my own. And I didn't go with camera and notebook and sketchbook and things. So, you know, it was a look and it was a chat and it was a laugh and a giggle and catch up with all sorts of things as, as we do. And um, so Friday, I got myself up, sorted, ready to go out. The weather was supposed to be light showers, you know, drying towards the end of the day. I got part way there and the heavens opened and I could see the weather coming from the west, which is where it was, and the clouds were all dark and heavy and I thought, I think I'd better go back home. I hurt, the shingles were hurting, I was so tired as well, I was still tired, so I came back home. And I thought, right, one day next week. So I've looked at the weather forecast and we've got really hot temperatures until towards the end of the week, which is fine. You know, by then, hopefully I'll be feeling a lot, lot better. And, um, you know, in, in many ways, let's put it that way, it's, um, it's all a bit of a pain. But it's so beautiful there. The gardens are just glorious. They've got sort of like semi-tropical plants. My favourite things, I, we saw two ginkgo trees I absolutely love ginkgo trees and leaves and the shapes. And, oh, I love these. <laughs> yes, she said. And the bark's amazing on them. So there's so much in texture and pattern and shape. Not just the flowers, but it was the shape of petals or leaves or the seed heads which are around now. So I really do want to go back to catch that pre-autumn and go back. I may take myself off there weekly or, you know, every fortnightly because we're coming into autumn and so there will be changes that are visible in a very short space of time and sometimes when the weather breaks in the UK we lose our autumn and I really really want to catch autumn this year I didn't last year I can't remember why but I didn't catch autumn last year um, I just think life got crazy again I think I was heading down towards the um, the injury and the, the emotional and you know mental breakdown I had a burnout I had in in February it was all starting around then so um yeah yeah so it's probably been the best part of a year that this is the turmoil has been acting and starting to work so there's a catch-up there's a look at stuff let's get some paper out I haven't got any well, I have got some in here that are colored but I think I'm gonna stick with uncolored paper because I have found that this paper is best used to draw on first and then add distri distress ink on the top, even if I'm using water-soluble inks, okay? Although I think those I did do with the octopus inks, the ones that are um, permanent. But today I'm going to use, what colour shall I use? Let me move my pens out of the way. Um, let's have a look. I think I might use, um, let me have a look, have I got a nice, got some lovely colours here. These are uh, a selection of fine liners I've got, I've got lovely greens. I do have a fondness for this particular green actually, but I think I'll use the darker green because that will look nice on the outsides of petals, but it will also look nice on stems and so on. So how does that sound? Yes. Did I see, I've got a pencil over there, I've got erasers, we're fine, we're good to go, we're good to go. 
Okay, I do need a pencil. I need a ruler. I found a place to keep my rulers fairly close to hand. Oh yeah. I'm trying to remember to put them back there after I've used them. It's always useful. Right, and I've got my glasses, so let's start. This is about A5, which is half of letter sized. If you cut it along the long edge, so parallel to the short edge, you'll get a size, a piece of paper about the same size. So I am going to put some guidelines on here as to where I want things to remain, because I am going to create a sheet of note paper. I'm making the border about yeah, it's about three eighths, one, two, three eighths of an inch wide on these sides. And then here I'll make it a bit wider so I can avoid the, the holes on the side, which is always a good plan. I'm just lining my dotted line up. So I'm actually making it three eighths of an inch away from, I think it's three eighths of an inch away from the these actually I think it's a bit more but I'm fine with that and I'm going to put a border on here about so big I don't know how big it is I'll measure it now so um, for those who prefer to work in centimeters which is my preference about one centimeter all the way round and it's oh it is about one centimeter from those it's an illusion because you've got all of that depth there but it's about one centimeter from there and this is near just over three centimeters wide I'm just checking I thought it was it's a bit wider at the top than the bottom so we'll just adjust that not that it matters too much because where's my where's my erase where is my I'm sure I had here a no I can't see my needable eraser so I'll just take this one and I'm just going to run down these lines just that little bit because I'm not sure how well these pens will react to anything else. So you put that there. I need something. I need a clip. I do. I need a clip. There's a clip. I've got my fan on because it's my computer tells me it's currently 24 degrees Celsius out. Um, it's due to get to about 27, 28, the forecast was, but I think we're quite lucky. So what should we do? I want something fairly simple. I quite like these seed pods. I quite like those. I really like my the thistle head here. Um, but I quite like these. <coughs> Excuse me. But I also quite like these. Let's have a look at those. Yes. These are quite, these are going to be quite simple to do. Okay, so I'm going to want them on a jaunty angle, and what's, what, I, what I'm thinking about is um, sort of snaking them up. I was thinking about putting a guideline in, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to start by drawing the center, and I will zoom in. So I've there got a teardrop shape. So let me zoom in for you. I will try to keep my fingers out of the way. I can't promise I will. But I will try. Okay, so I want to put an aura inside. Like so. And then I'm going to put a stem in here. And I've made the stem go inwards here and just flare out a little bit at the bottom. And I'm just going to put some little long thin triangles in there just to give a little bit of dimension in there. Now, round the outside, we're going to do something that is a bit like Mooka, but it's my own take, I suppose. You see this kind of leaf shape in medieval manuscripts quite a lot. So I've gone from close to the top here around and back out. It looks a little bit like the hook you get on, a, on an earring back. 
and then from this point I'm just going to go up here and around keeping this fairly parallel to the outside of this seed pod or whatever it is and then I'll take that down and just make it connect there with the bottom of the um, stem. I'm going to do the same on this side so out down, up, around, and a little curly cue, a little bit of a spiral with a little blob on the end. And then down, around, and up like that. So that is the basics of it. I'll work out what we fill everything else in with, and I'll work out what we're going to fill the rest in with. So I'm going to put another one here. I'm leaving a little bit of space between them so I can put the stem in like so and of course we won't see the base of the stem because I'm going to pretend that there's a stem that comes from behind here and why not? Makes life interesting. So I'm going to do these again and if they get sort of plumptious towards the bottom that's fine as well in fact I quite like them when they get a bit plumptious at the bottom and then come back up okay <laughs> another one up here so I am zigzagging them across the page like so the aura inside let's put these leaves on and then down and around and up I forgot to put the stem in didn't I that's okay you'll go in as it will, like so. Oh, that one's much bigger than the other one. Does it matter? Not really, because you get all different sized leaves on plants, even you know the ones that are opposite each other, don't we? Yes, I was looking at things like that and the arrangements. Oh, I was so inspired. I just hope I can find, I will find the plants I liked. They even have banana plants there. Banana plants. It's a microclimate in, in the walled garden. Amazing. Yeah, I know. I do love flowers and gardens. As does my older sister. She's a gardener though, and I'm not. Black thumb here. Let alone green thumbs. Dear goodness. Things grow if they're left alone with me, so anything that can be left alone will always grow extremely well. well that's a bit more of an exuberant one there. It's fine. And then another one here. Don't panic if they're all slightly different. Now, whether I add colour or shading to these today depends on my energy level. It's not brilliant, I do have to say. I had a migraine yesterday. I tell you, I'm falling to pieces. I'm not really, I'm not looking for sympathy or whatever, because I know I'll be fine from this. It's just I've never, ever had shingles. So it's the first time for everything. Somebody's going to tell me, oh, you are 60, prime time to get your first case of shingles. Somebody's bound to say it at some point. And I'm going, yeah, it's like the first time I needed glasses. I'd been to the opticians like literally a couple of days or, you know, not even two weeks, I think. Before, you know, I'd been eyesight fine, no problem, don't need glasses. Less than two weeks later, I was back going, I think I might need glasses. I can no longer see what I'm doing. 
and he rechecked my eyes and he said yeah he said yeah I said what's happened oh sorry I've gone off the screen for that last one and he said oh well you know hang on you're 40 I said I'll go to pieces he said it's quite common at 40 that your eyesight will you know deteriorate because the lens in your eye starts to crystallize when you go when you turn 40 or thereabout so you know it's quite common for it to happen it's quite ha common for somebody to notice that difference suddenly as well and I went great <laughs> what have I got to look forward to he said oh lots of wonderful things thank you I said so finding out what those wonderful things are actually he didn't quite say wonderful things but he you know implied that so great but in fact I had glasses and I needed glasses and it worked you know it was fantastic because it you know for art and even as a teacher you know it was essential but I didn't wear them much while I was teaching although the latter part of my teaching career I did have to if I was um, not at the front of the room and I needed to see what I'd written on the board I couldn't see it without my glasses so it might only be 10 feet away or whatever and I go can't see that can't see that at all. <laughs> right, so I've just done a little bit of rounding, so let's just zoom out and have a look at this. So I now need to decide what I'm going to put in the middle. I quite like this. It's kind of like Senna, and but I've done it like, what is the one mirth, is it? The Zentangle Pattern Mirth, where you start with a little C shape and everything comes out from there. I'm quite tender, I'm quite tempted to do Senna but do it with a shape in the middle as if we've got some you know everything's going down inwards there or coming out from the center um yeah let's try that and then I can put this to one side because I no longer need that so we good to do that yeah good I shall zoom in and I shall try to stay on in camera no let's try no let's try the right one there we go that's a bit closer in it so if I put an S shape in the middle of them all, ish, perhaps a bit closer to the bottom because that's where we've got the most space, but we shall see. And then center, we start at one end. Now this is how I do it. I, I don't really get how other people do it. You start here and you start drawing lines out and you add weight at the end. And when it feels appropriate, you just start changing the direction that these lines go because they will spiral and move in interesting manners. So, this is a Stadler Triplus. And I think it's an earth green or min it's not mineral green, might be, but it's a lovely vintagey green colour, dark green, which I absolutely love. So here I'm going to take the end of this S and I'm just going to bend it round and then I'm going to start going this way round it because that seems the logical thing to do. Well, you know. I say logical, it seems the right thing to do. It feels like it would be quite nice because I'll get all of these interesting kinds of shapes going on, won't I? The way they bend and move. Hopefully, anyway. I'm trying my best to actually fill these in. Now, so many patterns of work here. I mean, the teardrop shape is, you know, sort of like my my kind of classic um, seed pod shape. They're not, not, you know, necessarily so. Not all my seed pods look like teardrops, it has to be said. But, you know, to have those sort of like stripes inside going out with some seeds in the middle would work quite nicely. Right, I'm just going to go back to this one because I just want to bring this around here and again I'm going to start coming around this one I think yeah I'm going to make a bit of a pig's ear here but I think it'll work out because 
got those stuck together. That's fine. It is what it is. I told you I'm not an expert on Senna. Far from it. And I'm just going to look like this could do with a bit of thickness there, as could that one. I'll fill that little spot in there. And just add a bit there so it looks like those are going over and that's that's quite interesting okay so let's start in a different place let's start from this one this end here let's see how this works out this might be the right approach for me is to start by getting these ends to spiral off in a certain direction so i think i'll do the same with this end so i'm just going to have it coming back this way and just add some ink at the base. Now, thinking about this, the company I bought these from still owes me pens. I haven't heard from them. I had to nag them about the pens coming in the first place. So I may just call it too much hassle for the sake of a couple of pens. Actually, it's more than a couple. I'll uh, have to see if I can find open stock of these anywhere else in the UK. Because like felt pens, a lot of felt pens, they're all very vibrant and bright, which is great if you like those, but I am tending towards these more natural colours, I think. Or, you know, vintagey oldy colours. Which, you know, is how I'm going these days. I don't know why. I do know I've got to um, get a couple of templates done for daydreams, colour those in. Ah, now we're going to go round the roundies and I think, which way do I want to go? I think I might go this way with these actually. And just that little bit there that works it actually looks quite like quite neat well that worked better for me i think still feels a little bit on the weird side in the middle but perhaps that will become clearer as i finish this so um i'm going to do one more on this side and then I'm going to have these ones start to bend over. I'm still having really really bizarre dreams. I mean last night's was extremely bizarre. No I'm not sharing it. I'm just thinking for goodness sakes why me? Absolutely bonkers, it was. Right, so they make something a bit different, don't they? I'm not sure whether I like it or not, but um, also I'm taking these off in a different direction now, aren't I? And that's fine because they will all be different. So it looks like I'm being, being I'm asking you again to bear with me for a while while I get back on track with health and so on. It's it's going to take a couple of weeks at least for the the rash to go, and then it takes four to six weeks minimum for the pain associated with it to go. Luckily, paracetamol seems to take the pain away mostly but I do have a high pain threshold so you know what what might appear to be you know really painful for other people now that has worked nicely there I'm happy with that join here um, the doctor did say now painkillers 
Would you like a prescription for some strong ones? I said, no, shall I paracetamol first? Well, if you need any stronger ones, come straight back. Okay, it's manageable. But when I hurt my back, it was not manageable. It's awful. Never known pain like that. Not even when I broke my arm and my leg. I've got no memory of pain associated with them. I think I was just stunned going, oh, what have I done you? Okay, this isn't right. But, um, yeah. And of course, I've never had children, so I don't know what the pain of childbirth is like at all. So I can't even compare it to that. Okay, so let's have a look. There's three. Not too bad, not too shabby. So this way round seemed to work nicely. So it's not going to work out the same this time, though. I can guarantee you that. We never do. Because I can't remember how I went round from this one. I will do my best if the sound of the fan comes over on the um, video to edit it out as well, just saying. So if there's sort of like some background noise that, you, you know, then hopefully we can get rid of that by clearing up the background noise. I can hope. back and filling in little gaps as I go because I can see them better as I work with them. So this one I think I'm going to have it going around here. So I'm going to have a nice little arc there. Another one here. That funny little blob in the middle there but I'm going to leave it in because it's interesting. And if I filled all of that in in green, I lose stripes, as it were, but it's fine. So I'm going to go around this one, and around there. And you tend to get used to, how can I describe this? Is spotting opportunities for changing the direction of these lines that come off, these stripes that come off. And there's no right or wrong thing about it. I don't, you know, I'm sure. It's just how it works out, what you think about doing. So here, I instead of starting right back at the beginning, I started splitting lines as well, because I had such a small, small space this side and, and a larger spa space there to fit in. I needed to do it that way. And that little hole there doesn't look so bad now. Okay, so let's just do the last one. So again, I'm going to fill that in there and I'm going to start with some coming down like so. A bit patchy there. They look almost like leaves, don't they? Like tropical plant leaves in a way, but not quite at the same time. And I'm going to go round like so. And there. There. 
quite nice. Got little white bits there. It's okay, I can fill that in as I go. Just check. Just going up them all. Hopefully I'll remember to move them down so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just checking for where there are little areas of white in this lovely dark green colour and where I need to just tidy lines up a little bit as well. But I think oh, that needs a bit of ink there. Just checking down as to what I need to do. Perhaps a little bit there, and a little bit there, and there, and there. That's okay. Right, so let's zoom out again, and I'll have a quick drink of water, or a quick drink. Okay, so that's looking not too bad. Now I do need, I know I need to fill the background in in some way, or to add some things, so I'm going to add well, let's first go back and add some line weight because I didn't do that as I went round. So to the left and the bottom on the left hand side and actually on the right hand side. Inside here I think I might want a darker line there. I've got one there but just one on the inside of this just to give me that feeling that there's this is going inwards so the same here left and bottom that's not quite bottom don't know if you can see it's almost pointing back up to the top so as it begins to turn around is where I'll stop that line and I am going to add line weight to the curl inside the leaf and the bottom of the leaf I think oh gosh that one went completely wrong Right, we'll make them all nice and sturdy lines then. Which is fine. It is what it is. Go up and make all of that a nice weighty line. Like so, under here. A little bit there. Don't forget the stems on the left side of the stem. And I didn't do the left bottom here either. There we go. Right, let's look here. So that, that around the top there, and that down around the side. I didn't do inside here, did I? Nope, but we will do now. There, tidy that off. This inside here. And then this one on the outside, there. That's, you know, the left and bottom is what I meant. And then this is the last one that we'll need doing. You can tell I haven't done much drawing recently. My lines aren't as precise as perhaps they would ordinarily be. Okay, let's go around the here, around this side and see if we can get some darkness there. Around here, around there. That 
down there and that side as well. Okay, got my stem in like that. Bit, bit shoddy in places, but yeah, it is what it is. If nothing else, it's an idea that I can reproduce at some time. Okay, I want something. Kind of leafy here. So I'm doing this kind of pattern. I think it's flux, I think. But I'm going to try to do it in a way that I create almost like a shell shape of the leaves in these, these areas, like so. That's all right. That's okay as well. So let's go for the other I'm just adding it where I can, starting close to the stem really, and getting that as my starting point. And again over here, so we'll have some on this side, like so. I'm just rounding and adding that line weight to the left and the right, and perhaps here I could actually add some more going up, perhaps this way, and perhaps a cheeky one that just slips outside the edge there, which is fine with me. So that fills the bottom in quite nicely, I think. And they do need something in the middle of them to help separate them, so I'm just going to put a stem with a dot at the top and I'm making it go the same way as the leaves are because that will help to give movement and a feeling that these aren't just straight, that they are curving towards the tip. So it adds that kind of feeling to them. And of course I can continue to add some here as well because we're adding layers just to fill this background in. Right, let's carry on. I'm beginning to regret this actually now, but let's see how it ends up. Like I would have been better off, I think, choosing a different color. Perhaps a lighter green, because they're all much of the sameness, but that is what shading is for, isn't it? To help to bring different elements of the design out or colour. Now because these pens are water soluble, I am not going to be able to use watercolour, so I'm likely to use chalk pastels. So um, actually that's not too bad. I can still see my because I've drawn it, I know what's there, don't I? So I can still see my seed pods. Perhaps I shouldn't have um, weighted the lines on these. Too late now, carrying on. It's almost like feathers curling around. So, so I'm going to have one going up here. They're like waves. I might not add any line weight to these going forward, perhaps just a little bit where they connect and just see what the difference is. There may be hardly anything visible um, difference. So here I'm going to do these in the other opposite direction. Because that makes some sense because it then helps to separate all of this out. Where I've got little gaps, I'm just going to fill them in with 
separate out or it just adds a different kind of pattern doesn't it it's not what I meant separate them out but it does in a way it gives some movement to the to these frondy bits so I'm going to have some that support this one like so and then we can have them going all the way around now here there It is, it's almost like they're giving them a little cutch. Cutch, Welsh word meaning hug, amongst many other things. Or cuddle, so they're hugging them. Probably the last one going in that direction, that's for sure. Bring that back and I'm going to add some darkness there. And then... like this right. there was me saying it might be a short video I'm now up to nearly an hour so I'll finish this lot and I'll see how I feel and what happens when I come to time it's going to take my you know concentration and energy and effort to edit the video I always sound like I'm whinging and I'm not it's more saying I'm sorry <laughs> sorry you know I said I'd have more consistency but <sighs> not yet apparently <laughs> there we are Still got to get to the root problem of my um, anemia as well. So that's going to be a fun and game, shall we say? Okie dokes. That, I didn't think that would work, but I think it is. There's, it, it's going to need shading to bring out different elements, but I like the movement in these leaves that are around it. Um, maybe not everybody's cup of tea, but then I create art for me. And if other people like it, that's fab. And I think that is the right attitude to have. I don't know. Look at this, just curling around here quite naturally into that little space there. And then I'm going to use this little space as a way of changing how I'm adding these so that I can get some that are going perhaps up here and around this way quite cute as well. Just using the opportunities where I put them. There's not really a conscious thought about what comes next. It's sort of like, okay, I've got to fill this space in, so how am I going to do that? And the answer is, well, I'm going to start by perhaps having one here and then here. And bringing them all back towards a point somewhere over here. Fill the little gaps in and up here it's quite a big gap but I'm fine with a big gap being filled in. Again that helps with separating patterns and so on out. Helps to make some sense of it all. 
and in fact this little bit at the top here I think that might end up being filled in with the green ink as well. It feels the right thing to do there. I haven't got space to put any of these little feathery leafy things. Um, I most probably could if I wanted to. But they'd be very tiny and very small and... Oh look, I've got a gap there as well. So here is where there's going to go some ink as well. I haven't had a, a gap like that anywhere else, so I'm not going to try and put one of the feathery leaves in there. I'm going to make sure that we've got somewhere where we can see what the element... This works quite nicely because this is somewhere where we can see what that this particular motif or design element is. And work with it from there, can't we? Again here, I, I'm not going to try to put a leaf in here. I could, but it is a bit small and I think it's helpful to use some inked in areas just to help to bring things out. I don't know if you can hear it. Hopefully I'll get rid of it, but there's some drilling going on, as in drilling up roads or that kind of sound. So goodness knows what's going on. There seems to be something round my ear parts on a regular basis at the moment. This is going to be an interesting section because, because it is. Just like that, up to the corner. And then let's have a look here. And one there, so I can fill the little gaps in. And then I'll just go back and I've got some of the bits to add in. And over here. And while I've still got the pen out, OK, I've got a corner down here that needs a bit of ink in. I'm just going to check up the sides now to see if I need to add ink where the pencil box is just sticking out that little bit. They may not be exactly, you know, lined straight, but it makes some sense because it will get rid of these weird egg shapes then. That's better. And along here, there's one that needs to go here, which is fine. I think the rest are okay, to be honest. I've got some that are a bit wonky. I can add a bit more ink to that one more there that'll work and then I can just add some ink inside there and then I think everything is now okay yes it is a little bit there just a little bit there that'll be fine so that's what this now looks like okay let's get my chalky pastels out and we are going to use greens, I think. Okay. Now, these ones, I think I might want to use a different colour. And I quite like orangey red with green. Yeah, I do. It's true. Oh, what's that doing there? It's one of my dip pens. Right, I have got tortillons here. I do. I did have a... Yes, I have put it over there. Piece of sandpaper so I can just clean the tip of it. And that just keeps them going a lot longer. So I think I may just put, I may, I may not do all of this, but we may do enough so we can see what this happens. Now I don't try, try not to get any of this pastel on the green ink if I can. If it does, well, it does. It happens, you know. So I want to try and leave a, a bright area in the middle. I think it should be all right. Yeah, it'll be fine. Right, I just need some more here. Okay, let's have a look here.
actually yeah the colour doesn't dull the green down particularly does it so that's nice yeah I'll zoom in I'll do another one so you can see what I'm doing closely so I'm going to put colour along the white in the centre like so and then around the edge where that is And then I'm just going to blend it in. Some of these, these ones here, I didn't put any of this orangey red in there. And this green colour reminds me of, um, birds, of birds of Paradise flowers. They're absolutely beautiful. I haven't seen one for ages, but I do love them. It used to be in the greenhouse in Roth Park Lake in Cardiff where they had a carp pond as well and you used to be able to feed the carp and they were so they just come up to the edge of the pond and you could stroke them and touch them and they were quite happy it's not very good for them well actually it's not too bad in water it's if you take them out of water the temperature of your skin kind of burns them because they're cold water fishies in fact all and cold-blooded so you shouldn't really touch fish with your hands unless your hands are really really cold I suppose but they were absolutely gorgeous in there I haven't been there for years wait till the schools go back before I venture there perhaps I think they're due back later this week so the world quietens down I'm not a miserable person I don't begrudge you know youngsters and toddlers and parents and everything their time and space at all it's just that I don't impinge on it and complain about it per se. I know that it's it's not a good thing for me to be around that kind of noise and um, hijinks and the screeches of children enjoying themselves because to me that screech is danger and it's a loud, a loud noise that just startles me completely and I go into hypervigilance mode still. It's sort of like ingrained in me. So... So I tend to keep away from places like that. Does that affect my life? Not really. It's, um, it is what it is. It's who I am. I'm aware of it and I'd much prefer not to be triggered into hypervigilance or into some kind of um, overloaded sensory things and to be able to just get on with what I enjoy, you know, when I can. You know, even though Dufferin Gardens was pretty busy, by the time we went for lunch, the cafe was beginning to go quiet. And there was a um, family near us who had a toddler who was screaming. And um, so my loops came out, which caused problems because I, I thought I was talking loudly because you hear your voice much louder. And apparently I was talking very, very quietly. So my sister couldn't hear me. So I had to try and speak up. Um, but when they're gone, I took them off and I coped. But... You know, again, you know, it's what children do. It's, it's how they are. I haven't got a problem with that. I don't think they shouldn't be there. But I've got ways of mitigating the problems that I face. Put it that way. So... Yeah. I don't know how I got onto that. Can't remember what I was wittering on about. Birds of Paradise flowers, I think. I don't think they have any at Dufferin Gardens, sadly. But I could be wrong, because I didn't explore very far. We didn't get very far. We didn't even get around the Arboretum. So that's going to be fun. We were going to take part in the biodiversity day, but we didn't. <laughs> sort of like, we thought, hmm, it's going to rain. And it did. So we went, which is wise. By the time we got home, it was sunny again. We thought, oh, well. 
it's not going anywhere it'll always be there and you know there's always time for another visit at some point okay so to go with that theme of um uh, like birds of paradise i've got a lovely green here i hope it's a lovely green it's cleaning my tortillon up because you know rather than mucky six million when i can uh, clean them up so I'm going to use this beautiful dark green here, which actually works nicely with the with the ink, I think. No, I did not mean it to rhyme, honest. Put a bit more there, a bit more under there, perhaps a bit more on the tip and perhaps down there. Again, like anything, um, it's easier to start off with a little bit and then add more as you need it. What you can do, just try not to press so hard that you, if you're using chalk pastels or graphite, that you flatten the texture on the paper. Because if you flatten the texture on the paper, you're going to have problems um, adding any more colour because there won't be any little pockets to hold it. Birds of Paradise flowers, I always think of them as dark green and orange and purple, purple blue. So part of me wants to put purple blue around the edge, but I think that would look a bit daft. Okay, I'll do a couple more because I know you'd like to see it finished. But um, if I start to feel sleepy, I'm going, <laughs> all right, deal? Yes? Right, so let's do this. Might use a different green for that inside area. I'm trying not to press too hard with the chalk because I know that this paper will grab it into its texture and make it harder to move it or to get rid of any streaky bits, or, you know, any darker lines. So pull it back, there's two done. So that's starting to bring everything out. So I'll do this little one here. There we go. What I'd normally do now I know what now I wear now I know where I want the chalk to go is to do is to put the chalk on each and every one go through blend them come back afterwards now i do want to put another color green i've got this one which is a kind of mossy green and i think that would be quite nice in around here let's have a look and see shall we it's quite dark by the looks on it but it'd be a different kind of green it is actually it's a very different kind of green but I'm fine with that as well. So I'm putting darkness at the top and the bottom of these, these shapes and blending it out, leaving a highlight around the edge as if it's catching the light. So I will do all of these because they won't take very long. I've only got five of them. <laughs> I'm quite happy I have five because it's an odd number. I didn't realize, so I didn't count them before now. So, and this mossy green looks quite nice against the orange as well. So we pop that back. So this will be fine. Again, it's not affecting the um, the green of the um, pen. It's still showing through. It's quite nice because it's almost disappearing into the colour as well. I quite like that. It's almost like no line colouring or drawing or do you know what I mean? Adding colour. So just using pure colour to create something. Something I'm not very good at these days. I don't think I ever was. I much prefer drawing lines. That is me definitely me pen and paper 
I've just wiggled my mouse because the screensaver had come on. So that means I'm well over an hour. Well, I am one hour and 15 minutes. Right, let's do all of these as well, because if I've done those, I might as well do all of these, isn't it? Right, that's okay then. And I need to do the stems as well. So I'm going to put darkness at the top and a little bit towards... Well, at least I need the bottom one that's got a bottom bit of a stem, isn't it? The rest, they're all that colour. So I'll do this fairly quickly now. This streamlines the kind of um, work to do when you sort of um, know what you're doing, where you want to put colour, that you go and do that to all of them and then come back and do all the blending out. It saves... Um, back and forth, putting the pen down, picking the tortillon up. And so you're saving that little bit of time so it feels like things go smoother and quicker. Um, of course, if you like swapping them over and doing them one at a time, there's nothing wrong with that either. That choice is always yours. But I quite like finding, finding out what I want to do and how I'm going to make it happen and then going and doing the same thing to all of the same motifs in my drawing or pattern parts there we go so that's all of those done <laughs> there so that's I'll zoom out so you can see the whole lot okay so they're looking rather good now then these bits around the side I don't want to detract from them I could either make them very dark which would mean I might as well just have covered that all in green or I can go quite light. I mean, I've either got a yellowy green, which I think might just be a bit too yellowy. Let me just put a bit on one of these. Let's have a look and see what it looks like. Let me just clean this off because I don't want the, the darker green to come off on, on this section. Oh no, that'll look nice. Yes, yes, that'll be lovely. So again, top and bottom. These I will go through and add chalk top and bottom because I want the shadow or the highlights somewhere in the middle because if they're bent over that's where it will be so not necessarily slap bang in the middle but it'll be somewhere there so this won't take very long to do so I will get it all done with you now I'm not a fan of graphite, as you know, if you've been here often enough. So I know that you can add graphite on the top of chalk pastel. I know that um, it's something that the Zentangle crew have been doing with their latest project pack. If that's something you like, by all means do it. If you haven't got pastel pencils, use what you have. If you don't like pastel, use what you have, what you do like. Just make sure you use um, a pen with ink in that's suitable for the medium you're going to use. Like, I, if I'd wanted to use watercolour, I wouldn't have used um, a Stadler Triplus. Although I could use watercolour with it and use that to add some colour to these sections. But that's not a good idea. No, not today. See what I mean? How much quicker it seems to go when you've just got one thing, you know, one task to do and you can just whiz through them because you know what you're doing. There's a rhythm to it. And it's that rhythm that I enjoy. It's that rhythm I find soothing and comforting. It's almost like artistic music. So back with this and we're going to go blend down from the top towards the middle and up towards the middle. I missed the top of one there, but I don't mind that one might be lighter than the other again. It's all to do with variation, which would occur quite naturally anyway. The colours aren't as clean as they would be with, say, watercolour. 
every now and again it's nice to use different media and to be honest with you I'm quite enjoying using chalk pastels to add colour to my work. I find them rather pleasant to use. I don't know, I can't describe it but perhaps I feel more successful with them than I am with watercolour or any other medium I'm using currently. You know, a lot better, they're a lot friendlier for me to use than say coloured pencils. Or as you say in America, coloured crayons, pencil crayons. Um, so it's quite interesting. Now obviously because I've added chalk here, I can't add, well, I could actually add colour to this because I could mask all of this off with paper. I could put a strip of paper along the edge, you know, just over the edge and colour the other side, mask around the um, borders as it were as well. So that's always possible to do. Everything's always possible. I'm glad it hasn't got as hot as it was forecast to today because I wouldn't have been doing this. I did end up back in bed for a bit. I was uh, just so tired. Now the darker colours do stand out against that froth, frothiness, foaminess of that, of those there. Okay. So let me put these to one side. And the last thing to do, if I can find the pen, it should be on my desk. Hopefully it is. Yes, there. I've got a white gel pen. So I'm just going to get it working on the back of my hand because your skin is rough enough to get the ball moving and to clean it off. And of course it washes off as well. So I'm going to put little dots of white ink. This is a pigment um, hybrid pen from Pentel. It's the um, Hybrid Gel Grip DX and it has got white pigment ink in it. So it will pick up the, or will dissolve some of the other ink, but I'm putting it mainly on the, on the darker areas, but I'm trying to get some on the, the red areas as well in here, just to add that extra sparkle of highlight and because um, we want the highlights on all parts really. Problem is it's so warm it's drying up on the on the end of the ball quicker than I can get it down, I think. Of course, I could have got some other ink out. I've got some white pigment ink that's waterproof. Yeah, I've got white acrylic ink as well. But that would just be, well, daft when I can do, with, do things with this. Less likely for me to knock things over and make a big mess. So that's just hopefully, I'll zoom in, it's just bringing out, no that's not zoom in Angela, try pressing the right button, that's zoom in, it's just helping to bring out some, um, highlights here and that sense that there's, this isn't flat, it's helping to enhance that sense. And on the darker areas, it suggests that they're all shiny as well. We've got a shiny seed pod of some kind. So I am making sure that I'm adding some to the dark places as well, just to bring that out. How itchy it year. Itch year. So 
there's that. So those are looking quite spiffing. Let me just zoom back out. And I'm going to put some highlights around these, sort of around the top of the, or around that little spirally bit. Because I think that'll be quite nice. Just to help to bring some light into those areas and some interest. And then I think I'm going to call that more or less done. I think the only thing that I personally would do is I think I, I would like a little darker green on these where they are going behind others. So I use that green. So let's go for the slightly darker version of it. And let's just have a look. If I do, do couple and you'll see what I mean. So at the bases and where they go behind stems, I think that will really help with, the, with this. So let's have a look. It's a subtle difference, but it is a difference. I don't like to do that one as well. There. And up along the edge here. Behind here. Here and here and here. And there. And I'll go up along there. I'm going to do it all. You know, what the heck. It's only a couple of minutes more, isn't it? And that does, I think you can see the difference that makes, hopefully. I'm looking at the screen and going, it's subtle, but there is a difference there. So try putting a bit more chalk down. I think it'll be okay. I guess I could have found, this is my brain thinking, oh, I should have found some patterns that look like shingle patterns that you'd find on roofs. <laughs> let's, do some, let's draw some shingle patterns. Yeah, perhaps not. I really, really don't want to draw my shingles. Not that I can see them, but I've seen pictures of what they end up like. It's not pretty. So, yeah. Not advised. All because I had chicken pox as a child. It's the same virus that causes chicken pox. And it sort of sleeps in your body. And it can, some people never get shingles. It never erupts in their body. Other people they do and they get it more than one time as well. And uh, all I'm gonna say is thank goodness for antivirals. Now I know what it is. At the first sign of trouble, I'll be off. I'm going, right, I got shingles again. Give me those pills. <laughs> That's until I'm 70, because when you get 70, you can have a vaccination against shingles. But I'm not there yet. Because it can be serious for people who are older and whose immune system isn't as efficient. I'm surprised it's working so well with me, to be honest, but there we are. I seem to be recovering fairly quickly from it, as it, you know, I was told it would get worse before it gets better. Well, perhaps it's the paracetamol that means I'm not aware of how much worse it is. That is much better now, rather than having that one colour. I hope you agree. So, the only thing that's left for me to do is to find my pen. I'm going to put my initials down here. Today's date is the, oh, it's the 4th of September. And I'm going to call this one done. Lovely as a border to a page would equally be lovely, I think, as a bookmark. And even to do it in a different pattern in a different way. And your square with them starting from the centre going up to the corners would be quite interesting. And not quite sh I'd have to draw it to work out how you could fill the places in, but with anything. But I quite like this. It's very um, verdant and green and growing and full of life and health. 
and perhaps subconsciously that's why I've done this is because that's the need that's the need for me so take care look after yourselves I really don't know when my next video will be I'm not going to set this as a premiere because I don't know how long it's going to take YouTube to upload it I will put something in the comment not the comment section in the community tab a post there and I'm going to try and get a blog post done as well to let people know what's going on because I haven't been doing social media or anything I've just got it's enough effort for me to get on with you know things like looking after myself and and so on um, but I'll be I'll be fine you know it's not going to kill me <laughs> I'm not going to stay this way forever and I just, you know, every now and again, I think, oh, what next? <laughs> nothing, nothing next, nothing next. So, um, and I do need to focus on getting those colouring templates done. So if I can do some of those in the next couple of days while it's hot out, too hot for me to venture forth, I won't feel so guilty when I do venture forth. So um, look after yourselves, take care and have fun with this. And I'd love to see what you come up with and how you approach it and what you do with it. So until the next time, bye-bye. Hoyle, bye. -bye. bye.